the Masked Monks are the first enemies we encounter in Shining Force 3, and we will continue to see them pop up throughout the game. Wielding swords and possessing no special powers or abilities, these basic foot soldiers are vulnerable to the Force's knights, though still quite capable of dealing horrendous damage in large numbers. Since they almost always outnumber our heroes, they should not be taken lightly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Shining Force 3. This is Battle 1, my name is Total Biscuit, and our fearless Force of 4 is facing off against 5 Mask Monks. I have an initial confession to make before we actually kick this off. This battle generally gets one of my characters killed. Because I am absolutely terrible, what can I say? Well, the real reason for it is it's an unpleasantly open battlefield with very few choke points, and some of our weaker characters have so little HP that they can die in a couple of hits here, so... Just going to be a little bit careful, I don't want any early embarrassments, so I'm going to send forward my stronger characters to attempt to distract these guys and keep them away from our healer and our magic range damage class. Now, I mentioned in the LP, as you'll have read if you checked out the thread on something awful, that I'd given a permanent stat boosting item to our hero Kite, who now has 15 HP as a result of actually receiving a health bread. Now, the reason I did this is because the AI has a tendency to go for your leader. Because if it kills your leader, it beats you. You lose the entire battle if your leader dies. So the best bet, at least from a tactical standpoint, is to try and buff up your leader to the point where he can take an awful lot of hits. Because they're going to go for him no matter what. Regardless... I don't believe he's going to stand up without any healing, so I'm going to bring Grace in from the back and start healing. Now, you might ask, why on earth am I wasting mana healing three hit points? Well, you'll see right there, 10 experience points were gained. Now, 10 experience points at this level is 10% of a level, and you get that as a bare minimum, even if you heal one HP. So it's very useful to start using that mana, getting it out there, because you get it back at the end of a battle anyway, so that you can start gaining experience for your healer, who is not gaining as much XP as the rest of the guys, as you can clearly see their 13 XP they're gained by Mascarin as a result of doing damage, and you gain even more XP from getting kills. So the healer has to heal often, regardless of whether or not it's actually necessary. Now, you'll have noticed above the head of the Mass Monk there, when I targeted him with our Knight character Dantes, that there was an exclamation mark. Now, that exclamation mark indicates that the weapon your opponent is using has an inherent weakness to the weapon that the currently selected character is using. So it's a system within the game which allows for counters. In this case, lances, halberds, spears, which are the commonly used weapons of knights, are strong against sword-wielding characters. And this goes both ways. It goes against our guys as well as going against the enemy. So you have to be very careful about who you set up against who, because the amount of damage that you can do when there's a particular weapon vulnerability is, quite frankly, enormous, particularly at this level level. Thankfully, the sword-wielding characters that we have here are not against any kind of knight characters, lances, halberds, or whatsoever, although we will see that in later battles, and those swords that the mass monks are wielding don't actually have any inherent strengths against any of the weapon types that we are currently using. Now, you might be a little bit panicked here because our hero is actually down to 1 HP, but as you can clearly see, only three of the enemy can actually access him at this point, so they've actually gone for the next weakest character. They've gone for Masker and dealt four damage there. I'm not particularly worried at this point. We can easily heal Kite back up to full HP, and this is not the kind of game where you will get out without a scratch. It doesn't happen. You take a lot of damage in this game in pretty much every fight, and the idea is to keep your characters alive, not to avoid damage entirely. It's nice when you can, but it's not particularly common. So you're soaking up damage wherever possible, and you're making sure that you're soaking it up on characters that can be easily healed and can actually take the heat. For the moment, we're going to back off Masker in a little bit because I don't like the fact that she's being targeted by any of these Mask Monks. She can be killed in three hits by the normal guys, and you'll notice there was a 15 HP enemy that we're taking on, and he can actually do a lot more damage. He's got... He's, he's counted as the leader of this particular battle, even though killing him will not end the battle. There are certain battles that you'll find in future where killing the leader will end the battle. In this case, though, we've got to wipe out everybody. Now, I'm using Dantes to soften up the enemy characters. I'm not going to use Kite to do any of the softening up because at the moment his damage potential is actually very low. He can only do the same amount of damage as our healer class in melee combat at this point. Not good 
quite frankly. Thankfully, he does scale up an awful lot later on and becomes one of our most powerful characters. I'm uh, moving him back here to defend Masquerade, and as you can see, the AI is going straight for him rather than going for our weaker characters. That is what we're aiming for. That's preferred. So they're down to three which is absolutely fine by me and they're being weakened by our main damage classes and what we're going to be just be doing is knocking them out with our weaker characters which is Kite and we're actually going to use Grace a little bit later on just to do a little bit of damage because as I mentioned earlier you do get an awful lot of experience from finishing blows so it's well worth it at this point we can't heal Kite we're not within range our rank 1 heal will only heal people within base-to-base -base contact. Our heals later on get uh, get greater range, so we're just going to use her to actually knock somebody out and we'll gain 25 experience points there. Well worth it, that's a quarter of a level for our healer. Absolutely useful at this point. The healers do have a tendency in this game to lag behind a little bit in levels if you're not careful, so using them to get finishing blows is very useful. That's not the only benefit you actually get from that either. There is a system that I'll be explaining in greater detail later on called the Friendship System, which allows allies to cooperate in killing an enemy as well as healing each other, and they will gain points, which can be attributed towards Friendship Rating, which in turn provides bonuses when those two characters are together. Very useful, very handy, and something we'll definitely be exploiting later on. So let's finish this. Kite delivering the final blow there, and Dentez and Kite gaining level 2, gaining a bunch of stat increases the way that you expect an RPG to go. And that was Battle 1. Pretty simple. Not particularly long. Certainly the easiest fight we're about to encounter. And I will see you next time on Let's Play Shining Force 3 with Battle 2 on the Saraband Bridge.